John Perdue was born in German Valley, Pennsylvania. Although the exact date of his birth has been questioned, it is said that he was born on October 31, 1802. In the early 1820s, the Purdue family moved to Adelphia, Ohio, where John Purdue took a teaching job in a schoolhouse in Pickaway County. In 1834, John Purdue moved to Lafayette, Indiana, and became involved in several things, some of which were the first board of directors for the Lafayette branch of the State Bank of Indiana and a member of the Northwestern Freedmen's Aid Commission. He also donated money to churches, libraries, schools, and other organizations. After a time in 1864, the governor of Indiana appointed John to serve on a panel to sell stock for the first railroad for Lafayette and also contributed to the second railroad. At this point in John Purdue's life, he had become a successful businessman, donating funds for the Wabash River Bridge and owning many businesses and pieces of land in other states. Along with those accomplishments were becoming a trustee to Lafayette's first public school, providing funding to the schools in the time when the government was taxing them, and serving as Lafayette's savings bank's first president. John Purdue was a giver. He donated money to Battleground, Stockwell, Purdue Institutes, and also became a main supplier of pork for the Union Army when he owned a farm in Warren County, Indiana. After some time, John Purdue began to show signs of deteriorating health. Around this time was when Purdue began to be seen as an egotistical because when asked to provide funding for a lecture hall, he agreed, but only if it be named the Purdue Institute, which was denied. John Purdue's next year of life was troubling. Not only was his ability to communicate with other businessmen declining, but he was prone to confusion and paranoia with his declining health. On September 12, 1876, John Purdue had passed away in his room at the Hygienic Institute. Ever since Purdue's death, there has been much speculation as to what is said in his will and other information regarding his life that is still a mystery today. As with many colleges across the nation, there are countless myths and legends regarding its creation, the origin of its traditions and former students, and Purdue is no exception. There are many myths that can be heard around campus that att attempt to explain reasoning or background of the restrictions that John Purdue gave the university. One of the restrictions that John Purdue gave the university was that all the permanent structures that were built on the campus had to be made of red brick. Legend tells that John Purdue owned the local brickyard, and that is why he gave the university this restriction on the materials that could be used. However, Craner and Rawls Hall are both made of limestone. It is believed that there is a single red brick somewhere within the building so that it fits within Purdue's restrictions. Others believe that since the halls are not part of the original campus that John Purdue provided, then it should not matter what materials they are built out of. Another restriction that John Purdue said that no building on campus may be higher than the university building, which was the first building built on campus. Because of this restriction, architects had to use tactics such as raising the mathematical science building on concrete stilts so that it's technically a bridge and giving the upper floors of Bearing Hall a different zip code so technically it's not part of Purdue's campus. Before his death, John Purdue asked to be buried on campus. His grave is located in Memorial Mall. There are numerous stories and legends about how students from IU would participate in either grave robbing or vandalizing Purdue's grave. One of the stories even states that students dug up his body and brought it to a Purdue versus IU game. Many other legends exist about John Purdue, including the legend of John Purdue's finger, which were a series of smokestacks that looked like a raised middle finger that point in the direction of IU. In order to confirm or deny some of these allegations against John Purdue and what his will may or may not have said, we decided to ask some students around the Purdue campus to see what they had to say. Alright, so uh, what are your guys' names? Cody. Uh, so we're, what do you know? Uh, what do you guys know about John Purdue? Well, like, what have you heard around campus about him? Um, he's the founder of Purdue. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Or? Um, buried by Memorial Mall. Alright. <laughs> Anything? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you guys think you know stuff you hear about is true? Just in your personal opinion? I you hope know? so, because we're named Purdue. Well, it wouldn't make much sense. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thanks guys. What's your name? Erin. And what are some of the things you've heard about John Purdue on campus? Um, just that he's buried on campus and that 
he said that all the buildings need to be, need to be made out of red brick. And who did you hear this from? Uh, the people at BGR. And do you think any of that's true? Yeah, because I've heard people talking about it. Thanks. So, what's your name? Uh, my name's Colleen Harvey. Um, so uh, what are some things you've heard about John today, just around campus or anywhere? Um, I heard that he made it so that the campus had to be brick, and that he couldn't get a music degree from here, and he, like, died on Halloween or something like that. Okay, uh, so, yeah. who are the people you heard that from? Um, I actually went on a historical, um, haunted tour of Purdue, so, okay. yeah. Do you think they're true? Um, yeah, I, I think that they're true, so. Right. <laughs> the guy was wearing a top hat, too. I kind of believed him. Okay. <laughs> While there is much speculation surrounding John Purdue and what he has asked the university to do in his will, one thing is for sure. Of the many legacies he has left behind, the living and breathing memorial that continues to grow and evolve to this day will be Purdue University, his greatest achievement of all.